What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Heretic. I had the privilege of catching an early showing of this a few nights ago here at the Alamo Draft House in Raleigh, complete with Smellovision. That was a first for me. I will get to my thoughts on that later and how they kind of incorporated it into the movie. I'm sure you've all seen the trailer for this. It's about these two Mormon missionaries played by Chloe East and Sophie Thatcher. They're going around spreading the word of Joseph Smith. So Hugh Grant sent out a request to the church for them to come there so he can learn more about their religion. To start with, right off the bat, I immediately love these characters, these two Mormon missionaries. It literally starts off, and this isn't giving anything away, but it starts off with them having a conversation about magnum condoms while they're just sitting outside, uh, just chatting. And immediately you get a sense that these two are very naive, innocent, Chloe East plays more of the uh, sheltered and naive of the bunch. Sophie Thatcher is a little more street smart. And you kind of get the sense that she questions her role in the church more than Chloe East. They knock on Hugh Grant's door. They smell blueberry pie baking and Hugh Grant lures them into his house because I didn't know this, but... Mormon missionaries can only go into a house if there is another female present. So Hugh Grant's like, yeah, my wife is baking pie, come on in. No surprise here, but she's not baking pie. And this is where the smell vision kicked in at the Alamo. So from my limited understanding of the technology that goes into this, it's not... They don't use like a flame to create the smell or anything like that. It's a, a dry technology almost fed through the ventilation system itself. And whenever he brings out the blueberry candle, the, the room really did fill with this uh, blueberry fragrance. Mmm. Can you smell it? I guess the, the closest way I can describe it is it smelled like somebody came in and sprayed aerosol spray in the theater. It was cool. I was a little disappointed that that was the only time we got any sort of scent to go along with this movie. I figured, well, hey, if they already have this system rigged up, maybe we can incorporate a few smells throughout the movie. I saw a few missed opportunities, but it was cool. And they also brought around slices of blueberry pie. Like, just, here you go. And I was like, oh, holy shit, thank you. That's pretty awesome. Jumping into the movie, right off the bat, you can tell that this is a very tight script. Um, there is a ton of dialogue in this movie. It's a very talky movie. Not that that's a bad thing, but I think the script for this movie is probably bigger than the Book of Mormon itself. There are a lot of big ideas in this movie, a lot of thought-provoking ideas uh, delivered by Hugh Grant. He plays this character perfectly, that sort of slightly smug superiority complex who invited these girls over just to bring them inside and sort of punish them with his ideas and these theologian discussions about the history of religion. Albeit, it is very interesting. He makes a lot of good points. You can't help but root for, well, I wouldn't say root for Hugh Grant, but you just like him because he's so damn charming, even when he's being an insufferable piece of shit. He's essentially being the guy at the party that brings his acoustic guitar and forces you to listen to him play. Yes, Hugh Grant is truly the star here. I realize that other than Lair of the White Worm, his only other horror movie, I think, it came out in like 87. This is the only other Hugh Grant movie I've seen. Um, I'm, I've always been aware of Hugh Grant, but I've just never watched his movies and he is damn good in this. He has this charm that disarms these two missionaries and sort of disarms the audience. You're like, I'm enjoying 
watching this guy break down the history of religion and his whole thing is that religions have been derived from others rents and repeated over many years and he explains these analogies in a way where he brings out literal monopoly games like hey they ripped off this idea from this person and they just repackaged it so yeah like there's a lot of uh, bizarre analogies going on but they make a lot of sense but the movie gets these points across in a way where it's not hey, if you believe any sort of religion, you're stupid. It's just simply questioning uh, what you were led to believe growing up at such a young age that you don't even have the ability to question it. The movie poses a lot of big ideas, so much so that driving home from the theater the other night, um, I was talking to my girlfriend about the movie, no music playing, just um, kind of asking each other like, hmm, I wonder what this part meant or this one shot or, you know, it's just, it provides a lot of thought provoking dialogue, something you don't get a whole lot of these days. Some more positives for the movie. The camera work is beautiful in this. Um, I really enjoyed some of the shots of just Chloe East and Sophie Thatcher walking around the town and I, w I was just kind of admiring the way these shots were set up and it's visually a, a stunning movie like there's a lot of great camera work a lot of clever movements the banter between Hugh Grant and these two missionaries is so engaging I found myself especially in the first act completely hooked from the beginning where is this going to go? How is this going to end? What is going to happen next? And I felt that the entire audience was as well. If you get the chance to see this in theaters in a, a packed room, go do so. Because this was a fun theater watch. People were very engaged and people were laughing a lot. There's some legit funny humor in this. It almost borders on black comedy at times especially from Chloe East. She's just so naive and uncertain on how to navigate this awful situation she's been roped into. So whenever she's trying to talk her way out of it, she says a lot of um, funny stuff and the audience was laughing, I was laughing. Wow. No, you read more than we do. <laughs> no, seriously, we should be more like you, Mr. Reed. <laughs> Mr. Reed. <laughs> I have to say though, overall, about halfway through the movie, once you get a sense of the, the layers start to be peeled back a little bit and you see where this is going, my attention drifted a little bit. And by the third act, this is just me personally, I wasn't crazy about where the third act went. Um, if the first half of this movie is razor sharp, smart dialogue, psychological thriller, the third act feels a tad been there, done that in terms of what happens, but it, nothing is so egregious to where it ruined the movie for me. I just felt like with such a strong first half, it maybe could have gone a different direction. But even then, I mean, this was a lot of fun. I I could see it being in my top five. And I've seen a lot of people say like, hey, this is my favorite movie of the year. And I see why. For me personally, it's not quite there, but this is a damn good movie. It is so well made, so well acted. It almost feels more like a stage play at times. It's sort of like The Well meets Barbarian. Well, there is one other character who's a common thread throughout the movie. Topher Grace. Eric Foreman is, he plays a fellow missionary knocking on doors where these girls have gone because they've been missing. 
And I had no idea that it was Topher Grace until the credits rolled. And I was like, holy shit, Eric Foreman is in this. That's awesome. And hey, he knows all about the dangers of organized religion. You know what I mean? So perfect casting there. The final shot of the movie will leave you thinking. And it's kind of been in my mind for the past few days. Like, hmm what did that shot mean but you'll just have to go see it to see what i'm talking about so after the screening at the alamo they did a live stream q a with hugh grant and the host was saying that this is great on rewatch because whenever you do you can pick up on subtle hints throughout the movie these little puzzle pieces that mr reed hugh grant is laying out and I could totally see that, and I plan on doing so. I could see myself watching this again in a few months, so that way it feels a little fresh. Um, like I said, this isn't a, holy shit, my favorite movie of the year, but it's damn good. Watch it with an audience, because you are going to have a blast. Um... Major props to Hugh Grant. He is holding court in this movie and giving it his all. He does the entire movie with this kind of smile on his face, even when he's doing these fucked up things and saying all this horrible stuff. You can tell that Hugh Grant is having a lot of fun and he does a lot of improv which I learned through the Q&A. He really gives it his all. I mean, he this isn't a spoiler, but he even does a Jar Jar Binks impression at one point just to let you know like how he's like channeling his inner Nicolas Cage I feel like like he's really going for it and for that I commend him Chloe East and Sophie Thatcher are so good the acting the dialogue is perfect no complaints there but like I said some things in the third act kind of stumble a bit for me but that's not gonna prevent me from still saying that this is a great movie I think I'm sitting around three and a half to four out of five stars on this one. This is a a strong movie from A24 and I kind of feel like they needed this one this year because honestly wasn't a big fan of Maxine. The front room while fun and so over the top gross, it was okay. But with this one, I think they hit it out of the park. Um, I guess if you want to pay 50 bucks after shipping and taxes for a blueberry pie candle from A24, you can. But for that money, Hugh Grant better show up at my house and light it himself. Hugh Grant, more like you can't miss this movie. But go check it out. Um, it is good. Watch it with a packed theater. I think you're going to enjoy it. If you got a minute. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Have you seen Hair Tick yet? Let me know what you thought in the comments. Like, where does this stand in your 2024 ratings? See a lot of people saying this is number one. It's not quite there for me. It's going to take a damn good movie to beat the substance. And there's also a ton of other strong contenders out there. But yeah, let me know what you thought. Thank you so much for tuning in. Catch you next time. <laughs>